Good day, boys and girls. In this video, we're going to have a look at your revision for your final test for June. On your left hand side, you've got your question paper. And on your right hand side is your memo for the questions. Question 1.1, we have 27x cubed, y to the power 5, z to the power 0. And all of that is divided by negative 3x squared, y to the power 8. So over here, you'd find that I broke it down. If you did not remember your laws of exponents, you can have a look at it in this way. Where because your x is cubed, you're going to times x by itself three times. Because your y is raised to the power of five, you're going to times y by itself five times. Z is to the power zero, so you'll multiply it by one. And all of that is divided by your negative three. Your x is squared, so you're going to multiply x by itself two times, and y is to the raised to the power of eight. Hence, you're going to multiply y by itself eight times. Whatever is in your numerator that is common with what's in your denominator can be canceled out. For example, you have x here and x there, x there and x there. So those would cancel out and you'd be left with one x there. You've got five y's on the top, so that will cancel out with five y's on the bottom and you'd be left with three y's there. So you would write it as negative uh, so the negative nine is coming from 27 divided by negative three. So you've got negative nine X uh, to the uh, divided by Y cubed because you've got Y to the power three left here. It's Y times Y times Y. This one here does not have to be written there. You can simply give me the answer as negative nine X divided by Y cubed. Then you have 1.2 where you have negative uh, open brackets, x squared, close brackets, all of that cubed times by 2x, all of that is divided by x to the power 4. So what we want to do is we want to simplify out these brackets for us to get rid of it. So you got an exponent raised to an exponent means I'm going to say 2 times 3. So I've got negative x raised to the power 6 times 2x, all that divided by x to the power 4. Uh, I have the same basis x here and there. I'm saying negative one, the imaginary one that's in front of x here times the two. I have negative two. And I'm looking at my same base x there and the same base x there. So I've got an exponent of six plus an exponent of one. That gives me the seven. And it's all divided by x to the power four. Hence, I'm going to subtract four. And I have negative two x cubed. For 1.3, you got 7x to the power 1 equals to 1, sorry, 16,807. So what we're doing is we want to try to write 16,807 with a base of 7. So that if you're going to test in your calculator, you're going to get six, 7 to the power 5. So because I now have the same base, so I can equate my exponents and I've got x plus five is e x plus one is equal to five. And therefore we want to transpose this one and we'll end up with an answer of x is equal to four. Question 1.4, I've got two times six, which is raised to the power x minus two. The first thing we're going to do is divide by two to get rid of the two in front of the six. That will give me an answer of 216. Then I want to write 216 with a base of 6. So I've got 6x minus 2 is equal to 6 cubed. Now I have the same basis, then I can equate my exponents. So I've got x minus 2 equals to 3. And therefore, when I take my 2 to the other side, I've got x is equal to 5. Question 2. Question two, I have um, the expression negative x cubed plus x to the power two divided by three minus x plus 15. I want to know the constant term. So we said the constant term is any term that does not have a variable attached to it. In this case, your answer is 15. What is the coefficient of x squared? So if you look at x squared divided by three, you know that you can rewrite it as one over three times x squared. Uh, coefficient means the number that is in front of your variable and therefore your coefficient is one over three. 
2.1.3, what is the degree of the expression? So it's the third degree. Calculate the value of the expression if x is equal to negative two. So that means wherever you're seeing x, you're going to substitute negative two. Sorry, I didn't put the answer there. So you can just test that on your calculator. You're going to substitute negative two wherever you're seeing x. You can get one mark for the substitution, substitution and one mark for the final answer. Sorry, I forgot to put that there. Question 2.2.1. Now you need to simplify here and make sure to simplify completely. So you got negative x open brackets x plus three. You're gonna expand that multiply out. So negative x times x gives you x squared. Negative x times three will give you negative three x. You got two x times x, you got two x squared and you got two x times negative two Hence, you got negative 4x. The next step is for you to simplify your like terms. So you got negative x squared plus 2x squared. That will give you x squared. And you got negative 3x minus 4x. So you got negative 7x. The 2.2.2, you got negative 3 x to the power of 5 plus 9x cubed minus 9x or divided by 3x. So that would mean you must factorize. Um, factorize, you're going to look for your highest common factor. And in this case, it's negative 3x. So once you factorize that, you got to pull out your negative 3x, you open brackets, and you're going to write whatever's left after that. You got x to the power of 4 minus 3x squared plus 3. One of that, remember, is divided by 3x. This 3x may cancel out with that, and that's why you got negative out here, and you've got your brackets. To get rid of the brackets means whatever is inside the brackets, the sign must change, and therefore you're going to have negative x to the power 4 plus 3x to the power 2 minus 3. If you look at the other method of doing it, you got 3x in your denominator, so seeing that you might decide that, okay, that can be canceled out. And therefore you may choose to pull out three X as your common factor. And that will leave you with um, negative four X to the power four plus three X squared minus three inside the brackets. When you cancel the three X or by the three X or basically you divide three X by three X, you will have whatever is left inside the brackets. Um, question 2.3, you'd use FOIL method. So you got 5m times 5m giving you 5m squared. 5m times 2 gives you 10m. Negative 3 times m, you got negative 3m. And you got negative 3 times 2 giving you negative 6. Yet again, you have to look for your like terms. Your like terms is the only two numbers, it's only the two numbers in the middle. So you got 10 minus 3 and you got 7m, your 5m squared will come down and your negative 6 will come down. Question 2.2.4, because you're seeing that you have the same term a and a and you got 1 and 1 and the only difference is the signs in between, you can recognize that when you simplify that you're going to find the difference of two squares and therefore your answer will be a squared minus 1. Um, sorry about that. Okay, we're back. Um, sorry about that. So you got a squared minus one there because one times one would give you just one. Here you got a plus two all raised to the power two, and that means you're going to repeat the brackets. So you're going to say a times, uh, sorry, open brackets a plus two close brackets open brackets a plus two close brackets again, and again you're going to use FOIL method, and you would come to an answer of x squared plus four x plus four. Determine the numerical value of the expression given below if g is equal to 1 and h is equal to negative 1. Here again, you're going to substitute your values for g and h, getting a mark for your substitution, and your answer there is 9. 
factorize for you. So if you look at 3.1, when you're factorizing that, you're going to see firstly for a highest common factor. And in this case, your highest common factor is seven. So you got seven Y as your highest common factor because Y you would find is occurring each of your three terms. Once you put seven, pull seven Y out, you're going to open brackets, you're left with X Y squared minus two X Y plus two, and you're going to close the bracket. 3.2, when you look at 3.2, you got eight N, open brackets N plus three, plus two into n plus three. Finding that this n plus three is common here and there. Hence, you can pull it out as the highest common factor. So you got n plus three, you open brackets and you write whatever else is left. So you open brackets, you got eight n left there and you got two n left there. So therefore eight n plus two. Question 3.3, you'd recognize it to be the difference of two squares. So the square root of 81 will be nine. Square root of M squared is M. Square root of one over 36 is one over six. And the square root of N squared is N. So you write your terms down in each of your brackets and you put your plus sign in one and your negative sign in the other. Question 3.4. So you have a trinomial here. If you look, you can't find the highest common factor. And to go right in and look at your third term. Your third term is 24. So you're going to list the factors of 24 in pairs. So you have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. You're looking for the pair that's going to make the middle term, which is 5x. So the only pair that can make 5 is 3 and 8. And the five is positive means you're going to say eight minus three. Therefore, open brackets, you got eight, you got X plus eight because eight has to be positive and you got X minus three because three has to be negative. 3.5, when you look at your numerator, you got five M plus five N, you can factorize that. So you pull your highest common factor out, which is five. So you got five open brackets, M plus N close brackets. All of that is divided by M plus N. Because you're seeing M plus N occurring in both your numerator and denominator, it can divide itself and you'll end up with an answer of five. Then you got 3.5.2. So you have X minus one divided by three X times 18 X divided by X squared minus one. Now you have a fraction multiplied by a fraction. You wanna see if you can factorize anything or you can choose to cancel out first. So when I'm looking at it, I can see the second fraction as a denominator that can be factorized. You have the difference of two squares there. You got X squared minus one. So quite simply it's X plus one and X minus one. So I factorize that. When I look at it, I can cancel this X minus one with that one. 18 divided by three will give me six and my X and my X can cancel out. So I'm only left with six in my numerator and in my denominator, I'm left with X plus one. So that brings an end to your revision. Um, good luck and I hope you guys do well. Thank you.